morning and welcome to the Sunday school service of the Church of God. We are glad that you can join us today. And we are blessed that God has given us life and has given us the opportunity to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Our title today, Working Out Your Salvation. Our scriptures are from Philippians chapter 2, verses 12 and 13, Hebrews chapter 2, verses 1 to 3, John chapter 9, verse 4, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58, and John chapter 6, verses 27 to 29. Almighty Father, we thank you for your everlasting love, your amazing grace. We thank you, Father your blessed words that we will be able to study today, that will help our souls, help us have a closer walk with you, and Father, it will help us with salvation, sanctification, and it will help us lead a life that will, pleasing, that will be pleasing in your eyes. Father, we humbly ask for the presence of your Holy Spirit, for his guidance, for your speaker. And I may be able to preach and to teach your truth with all love and compassion. And Father, may you minister to everyone listening today. Help their needs. Help their spiritual needs, Father. Help them draw them to you. They may find salvation. They may find life in you. My Lord, we claim victory in your name. This we humbly ask. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Working out your salvation. Let us define what salvation is. Salvation is the redemption of man from the bondage of sin and liability to eternal death and the bestowing of everlasting happiness. Salvation the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Salvation is what the Father willed for him to do, to send him to this earth for the salvation of men, for the life to be reconciled back to God from the separation of sin. Amen. And because of sin, there have been many definitions of salvation scattered throughout this earth. And just to find out those different, those different definitions, I searched it up yesterday. And let me outline just a few definitions of what salvation is not. Salvation is not just faith on Jesus Christ. It is not just belief on Him. Salvation is not of good works or is not of being a good person. Salvation is not donating, giving your time, giving your money, or handing our Bibles. Salvation is not merely the worship of God. It is not only prayer it is not only fasting. Salvation is not sacrifice. If we recall in the Old Covenant that God accepted their material sacrifices, but in the New Covenant, God only accepts spiritual sacrifices. So worship has to be in spirit and in truth. So that is what salvation is not. Let us define what salvation is by the Word of God. Before you receive salvation, you must hear the Word of God first. So by hearing the Word of God, it is by faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. And after hearing the Word of God, 
comes conviction by the Holy Spirit. Jesus himself said, No man can come to me unless the Father who sent me draw him. And after that soul is convicted, convinced that they are a sinner in the eyes of God, comes godly sorrow. Godly sorrow works to repentance. It is by that sorrow that you see yourself as a sinner in the eyes of God, that you have sinned against Him, that you want to be reconciled back to Him, to be forgiven of your sins. And the last requirement for salvation, just as the words of our Lord Jesus Christ to that adulteress, go and sin no more. So we see that it is not only by faith, by repentance, but it takes work to keep salvation. We must keep righteousness. Be without sin, be righteous in the eyes of God. And so it needs effort. It takes work. Our aim today is to impress the student that one must not neglect their salvation. It takes work to keep the salvation. It is not something that we experience once and we forget about it. It is not something that we experience once and that we will forever have if we don't work on it. The devil has preached false teaching to this earth. And as you have always heard me say, that there are those who believe in the false doctrine that salvation covers all sins, committed and inherited sins. That even after you have the grace of Jesus Christ, you can still keep sinning. Dearly beloved, do not be deceived. Salvation indeed covers all sins. It will give you grace. But that grace is not an excuse to commit sin. Salvation is being saved from our sins, not in our sins. Let us begin with Philippians chapter 2, verse 12 and 13. Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but how much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which, which works in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. So salvation, if we look at what the Apostle Paul says here, salvation produces obedience. That when we were in our sins, when we were in this world, we were the enemies of God. We did not do His will. We were transgressing His laws. But after receiving salvation, we have obeyed His commandment to repent of our sins. That was our first act of obeying our Lord Jesus Christ. But obedience does not stop in that first act of repentance. In salvation, we are continually obeying the will of God. 
that we are not only obeying Him in the sight of our congregation, of our brethren, that we are not only called Christians when people can see us, for there is an eye that sees us every day, every hour, that is the eyes of our Father in Heaven. That we are obedient to Him, no matter what, we are obedient to Him in all His ways. That we are, as the Apostle Paul says here, to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. When someone is afraid, they are careful. They are keeping safe whatever it is they are afraid of losing. Salvation is the most important thing a Christian will ever possess. It is more important than life itself. For we see how God did not value the life of His Son. For He gave us His Son to give us life. Amen. And His Son did not value His life. For He gave us His life willingly. Amen. That we may have salvation. So value your salvation, my brethren. Amen. Keep it safe. Be careful. This is your life. It is worth more than your life. It is eternal life. But we are not alone in working out our salvation. God did not leave all the efforts to us to be able to keep it, to be able to work it out. But God works in us to will and to do His good pleasure. Amen. To will is the first thing. That God gave us faith to seek repentance. God cannot seek repentance for us. We had to do it ourselves. So by, by His grace, by His faith, we sought repentance. It took our own intention, a conscious de decision to seek His forgiveness. And after receiving that salvation, He gives us power to do good. I said earlier about good works and being a good person. Our Lord God does not does not recognize good works of sinners. For in the eyes of God, if you have sin in your heart, there is no righteousness in you. That is why it is only those who have salvation that when they do good in the name of God, it is for His good pleasure, for His children have His righteousness in their soul and their hearts. That is the only way for God to be pleased in our life. Because in salvation, we are added to His family. We are considered to be His children. We were lost, now we, were, now we are found. And thank God, for we cannot stand and be righteous without Him. Amen. We are nothing in ourselves. We are easily overcome with sin, without God. It is the grace of God 
that allows us to stand to be strong. It is His Holy Spirit that gives us the strength to obey Him. Amen. To do the good works. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1. Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. We are to be diligent in the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are to give it our full attention. For it is by the word of God that we leave, that we live and breathe. Now the Apostle Paul here said something true. And it is important for all the souls to hear this. That he says here that it is possible for us to lose salvation. Do not believe the teachings of the devil. Those wolves in sheep clothing that aim to bring your soul to harm. Do they tell you that your soul can be harmed by sin after salvation? Or do they tell you you can sin and you still have the Lord? But as the Apostle Paul says here, we are to be careful. We are to keep our salvation safe. For it is possible to lose our salvation. We must work it out. To be strong. We are strong by the Word of God. We are fed by the Word of God. That man does not live alone. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Amen. It takes effort to keep our salvation. Amen. We are not to be careless with our living. We are to think before we speak. Think before we act. We are to seek God's will before we do anything, before we make any decisions. We are to stay away from those things that could harm our souls, that could cause us to slip in our salvation. Earnest heed, my brethren. Keep watch. We know that the devil is as a roaring lion searching for whom he may devour. If he is working that hard to find Christians to bring down, we should be working just as hard or even more than him to keep ourselves in watch. Keep ourselves safe. Mm -hmm. Remember, we have the Lord Jesus Christ. We are not alone. We have His grace. We have His Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hebrews chapter 2, verses 2 and 3. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? In the Old Testament, our Father in Heaven used angels to send. 
to bring his message to this world. That their word was absolute, for they brought the word of God. An example that I read about was in Sodom and Gomorrah. That it was two angels that met with Lot to tell him that he must bring his family out. For in their wickedness they will be destroyed. And we see that in those cities that they did all the unrighteousness, the transgression and disobedience. And we know how God is faithful in His words. He is faithful to give us our our rewards, and He's faithful to give out punishment. Mm -hmm. And we see how in Sodom and Gomorrah, that in their unrighteousness, they received what was just and fair for them. That in their unrighteousness, they were destroyed. And Lot was instructed to not look back But his wife did, and she was turned into a pillar of salt. We see how Lot and the angels, that is salvation. When we have salvation, we are to look ahead. We are not to look behind in our life. Amen. But God does allow us to keep our memories of our past life, to remind us of what we once did to remind us to not repeat it, yeah. to not make the same mistake. Amen. In verse 3, the Apostle says, How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? <clears throat> We who have heard the Word of God, who have accepted Him as our Lord and Savior, have been lifted up out of the quicksand of sin. And we have been taken out of this world. Or the world has been taken out of us as Christians. That there is no escaping judgment if we are to turn back, if we are to lose our salvation. I have said before that we are judged according to the light that we are exposed to, that we who have salvation, who have heard the doctrine of our Lord Jesus Christ, have been shed full light in our souls. That there is nothing that we can return to the Lord Jesus Christ but gratitude. Mm -hmm. That there is no escaping that judgment of our Lord if we were to turn back. Mm -hmm. That He will save you my child, I have given you my life. You have heard my truth. How could you turn back? He brought the gospel of our Father to this earth. It was perfected by His death. For the Comforter was sent to abide, to be in all His disciples, to bring the gospel of salvation to this whole world. And by the grace of God, His truth, His gospel has reached us today. Amen. It is confirmed 
by our faith. It is confirmed by the faith of those who brought it to us, for we could see the true work of grace in them. And we have experienced that grace of salvation. We have experienced that change of heart. We have experienced the best thing. The best experience that anyone could ever experience. God did not fall short on His words. He has fulfilled everything in us. We cannot turn back and blame Him and say, You did not tell me this, you did not tell me that. But He has given us everything. It is up to us to work out our salvation. It is up to us to keep it safe. It is up to us to care for it just as much as our Lord Jesus Christ did. Amen. Amen. John chapter 9, verse 4. I must work the works of Him that sent me while it is day. The night comes when no man can work. This was our Lord Jesus Christ speaking. That he did not rest. That night and day he did the work of the Father. If I'm not mistaken, in this chapter of John chapter 9, the Lord healed a man. But it was a Sabbath. It was supposed to be a day of rest. But he did not follow God. That while it is day, meaning while there is life, he must do the works of him that sent him. So that is a precious example for us, for the Christians, that while we have life, while the world is existing, while the Lord Jesus Christ has not returned, it is still day. That we have work to do. That we know we work in the daytime. We work while there is light. But we can do so much because we can see everything. Mm -hmm. So we who have salvation have been given the Great Commission. To preach the gospel to all the world to baptize them in the name of the Son, the Father, and the Holy Ghost. While there is day, is while there is life. Amen. While there is day, while there is strength. Amen. God has given us our life and our strength to worship Him, to do His will. Let us not wait until we are old to do the will of God. That you might say, I'm still a young person. I want to enjoy my life. And I can do the work of God when I'm older, when I've done all my enjoyment. But what guarantees your old age? God God could take you tomorrow. Amen. You might not you might not wake up and you neglected to do his will. So those that have received the grace of salvation, we are saved to serve. Amen. We must work while there is day, we must work while there is life, while there is strength. For God is faithful and just to help us with all that we do for Him. 
For when death comes, that is the end of the road. There's no more preaching of salvation when you're gone. You cannot preach salvation to your loved ones if you're gone. Amen. Let us take advantage of the light, of the life that we have. Amen. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Therefore, my beloved, <coughs> excuse me. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be you steadfast, unmovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. <clears throat> in salvation, we are steady. We are steady, unmovable, for our life is built on our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ said to Peter, Upon this rock I will build my church. That does not mean he made Peter the first pope. That is the teaching of the devil. Jesus Christ was speaking. None other than himself. The Bride of Christ, the Church of God, is built on Jesus Christ. Amen. He is a rock. He is the foundation. He is our foundation. Amen. Amen. That we are strong in Him. He who gave us the grace of salvation gives us the same grace to be strong in Him. That in His doctrine, in His gospel, we know it is the truth. So we are not moved. We are not swayed by anything. Amen. We are not swayed by the enemy, by teachings by doctrines of devils, by doctrines of men. If you are moved by doctrines of men, that is because you allowed them to. That is not because God is weak. And the Apostle Paul added, we are to abound in the work of the Lord. We are to grow in our work. We did not receive salvation to just sit on it and wait for Jesus Christ to return. Mm -hmm. We did not receive salvation to just sit in service and listen. We received salvation to mature, to grow. As a child of God. To grow, to bear fruit for Him. The Lord Jesus Christ is the true vine. We are connected to Him. Amen. And we are to bear fruit. That is how we know we are using our salvation. But you also know that if you do not bear fruit, the Father will cut you off from the true vine. For if you are not growing, then the vine is in danger of stagnation, of ungrowth. 
But we have a precious reminder from the, from the Apostle Paul that our labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Keep your head up, my brethren. You might think that you're not seeing any growth in your service. You're not seeing any fruits from, your, from what you're doing for the Lord. But God, God sees your efforts. Amen. <clears throat> God sees what you are doing for Him. Do not trust in what you see, my brethren, but trust in our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Brother Ding tells me that with our online ministry, we do not see those who listen. But God sees them. Amen. We do not see who reaches, who is reached by our ministry. But the Word of God is reaching across the world. Amen. Our preaching, our teaching, our blessing souls today. And Brother Ding said that on our last day, in that last day, it will be revealed to us. The fruits of our labor. We will see those who are saved because of our efforts. We will see those who are blessed by our life, by our words, by our actions. So my brethren, keep going. Yeah. Keep working. Keep working for the Lord. Your efforts are fruitful. It's always fruitful in our Lord. Amen. Amen. John chapter 6, verse 27. Labor not for the meat which perishes, but for that meat which endures unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For him has God the Father sealed. Labor not for the meat which perishes. Amen. Everything in this world is temporary. Mm -hmm. Nothing is permanent except for the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our salvation is permanent if you make it permanent, if you keep it safe, if you do the works, it is permanent. And with our salvation, we do our work for the Lord by His Word. The Word of God is our fuel. You cannot feed your soul with the material food of this earth, but our soul is fed by the Word of God. Right. That meat which lasts into everlasting life is the Word of God. 
The Word of God is the Lord Jesus Christ. I said it earlier, I will say it again, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. His word is our daily bread. Amen. Our prayer is our strength. Have a strong prayer life. Our services are our strength. Our prayer meetings, Bible studies, And our Lord Jesus Christ is not saying that it is wrong to strive for a material life. What He is saying is that we must put first things first. We must put priority to that which is important. So which is more important? Making money or serving the Lord? For we know there are those who have made their work their life. That all they seem to do is work. That they have no time for God. Will you be able to bring any of that with you after you die? So we are to work for the Word of God. We are to put in our efforts and our service to Him. We are not to do all the work and leave the work of God last. And we will be tired. We will be sleepy. Is that the kind of work that our Lord deserves? And if we endure for that everlasting life, <clears throat> our Lord Jesus Christ Himself will give you that crown of life. That you, my child, have earned this. That you have given your life for my work. That you did not deem the work of this world to be worthy. And as a reminder for his children to give more effort to the work of God before the work of this world. Amen. Time management, my brethren. There's a time for work, time for rest time for God. But let's make sure we give God what is His. His own time. For His own work. Amen. Amen. Verses 28 and 29. Then said they unto Him, what shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that you believe on Him whom He has sent. So the Lord Jesus Christ was actually saying this to a crowd that was following Him. And and they wanted to know how they could do the works of God. Maybe they had in mind how to work the miracles. For they could see how Jesus Christ did many miracles. 
the works of God are more than just miracles. We see how earnest they were. We see that even if, even if they had the wrong idea, they were still earnest. So I know the children of God are earnest. Are earnest to do His work. The brethren are encouraging. Their lives are an encouragement. Mm -hmm. We had a prayer meeting a couple of weeks ago, and I was I was blessed Amen. by the prayer request of Sister Jane. desired to do more for God, Amen. to be used by God, for Him to give her a ministry. Amen. How pleasing that must be. For our Father in Heaven to hear them. Father, please give me my ministry to do your work. And the work of God that has been given to us As we have always said, is a great commission. First and foremost is to preach the gospel for the salvation of men. But we see how the Lord Jesus Christ did not say that to these people. The first thing he said to them is that you have faith in whom he sent. Have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the first step. It was the first step to salvation. It is the continuing step in salvation. Because in our Lord Jesus Christ, the gospel is perfected. In the Lord Jesus Christ, we have salvation. And for His children, as we work out our salvation, we go on to perfection. Amen. We go on to sanctification. It is by the same God, by the same grace, that we receive the second work of grace. How the sinner believed on Jesus Christ to be forgiven. How the sick believe on Jesus Christ to be healed. And how the justified believe on Jesus Christ to be sacrificed. To do the works of God starts within ourselves, my brethren. To continually grow in His Word. 
Let us work on ourselves. And that will show, that will exhibit itself outwards. That we can share that progress with others. That we can be strong to be able to do the works of God. We have a lot of things that we work on in our life. We work to improve in our jobs. We work on our relationships. We work on our health. But let us work on the most important one in our life. Our salvation, our spiritual life, Amen. our relationship with God. If in comparison to exercising, to working out, mm -hmm. you are not strong after one exercise. And if you stop, you go back to where you came from. Mm -hmm. So it's the same with our salvation, with our relationship with God. It is a continual work. Mm -hmm. okay. Exercising it every day. That this is a lifelong work. Mm -hmm. It is a blessed work. Amen. That will give us satisfaction. The work of this world will not give us any satisfaction. Our fruits of this world will not give us anything. But in working on our salvation... Our relationship with God is the most satisfying thing. Amen. And you will see your fruits once we meet our Savior. <clears throat> to have Him be proud of us for keeping what He gave us for keeping us safe is our goal. Amen. So my brethren, be strong in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Abound in His work. Go on to perfection. And always remember to look unto Jesus. He is always with us. Amen. We are never alone. Amen. 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 Dear Father, my Lord, my God, thank you so much for the gift of life, Amen. the gift of your Son. Amen. Thank you, Father, for the salvation that you have rescued us from sin, Amen. from death. And Father, we thank you for the strength, the abiding of your Holy Spirit that we may be able to live a righteous, a holy life in your eyes. Amen. Father, we humbly ask, may you help your children Amen. continue to grow, to be fruitful <clears throat> in their spiritual life, in their work for you. Help us, Father, go on to perfection. Father, we know that you will not withhold that you will not withhold any good thing from any of your children that ask of it. That as long as we ask in your name, in your will, you will give it to us. Amen. And Father, we thank you for the blessings. Thank you for this life. Amen. And we thank you for today's victory. Amen. This we humbly ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.